Most people in life are looking for how do I make a life worth living and return with having. When a policeman steals from the people he's supposed to protect, what are we supposed to think in society? We have information coming from NASA and other reputable sources that says that there's aliens of different varieties floating around in space. Most of us who've read books by astronauts or seen videos with them know that what they believed they saw was pretty real. So it's not really a hard deal to accept that there is a community above our world that we know nothing about. Probably many of us have seen spaceships that look like clouds and are like, that's not a cloud, but I don't want to know what that is. We've had plenty of films on aliens by people like Will Smith. We've certainly had films on epidemics and pandemics from 007 to other important stars like Tom Cruise, who did one several years ago. We also had the very creepy one done by Will Smith, and I'm not going to keep talking about Hollywood, but Hollywood often predicts and projects and gets information from governments that we often don't get until it's way down the pike. But this new way of getting a census of who's in America is pretty interesting, don't you think? We all now have this illness we're facing. We're facing a mortality rate. We're being told that all these people are dying of COVID. We openly know that COVID is a flu strain. We also know that when people get a flu shot, they become ill. So people who have a predilection to illness may not be willing to choose putting an illness in their body, and that is our lawful right of or under any international treaty, especially the Declaration of Human Rights, which I find fascinating is right now has been taken down and offline by the United Nations. I would like to ask the historians of our communities to go to the archives to get the real document, the original document, and the original information that tells people why we went into those nations with that human rights treaty in the first place. You see, people were being sexually trafficked. Women were being bought and sold as if they were a commodity and property or a trophy. And there's one thing that a man of God knows, that a woman that the Lord puts in his life, puts on his path, that becomes the fortune of his heart, mind, and soul is just that, that Jesus Christ chose that for him. That Jesus Christ chooses our path is possibly true, but I'm a pagan, not a Christian. I'm almost a Wiccan because of the magic of the Lord's house. If you've never seen the energy of God, it's because you're too busy watching my face and not watching the world be revolving in my hands. But Jesus has been told through song to children that he's got the whole world in his hands. But isn't it interesting? We learn from Kushner's work that good things or bad things happen to good people. So what is it that you want in a world? Do you want it full of Kantian thought of what's good for one is good for the many? Or do you want to have some divergent thinking that says, I can understand my perspective and my opinion and my point of view, but I'm also a m mature enough to understand how you feel that is you. You see, there are people that want to say that Christ did not create certain types of people and that those people are of Satan's house or sinners. So they pick up a gun and they walk in and they're a version of God and they kill people. Actually, they're the ones with the mental illness. You see, the purpose of the gun and no parents book on giving up the gun in Japan or giving up the sword I think it was to take on the gun was for people to have a better way to protect themselves from the warriors of the world who lie, steal, cheat us out of property, out of children, out of women, out of men in human trafficking. Human trafficking has been a part of the world since the world began. We had slaves in the Bible we had people like David who gave his family a survival and a revival. But we have people that forget the stories of old because they're not even in the Lord's house on a Sunday. They're busy at work, putting in their 40 hours, or they're in after hours working way beyond what they should be at their jobs, partially because they have no life, or they have no spouse, they have no child, or they just can't get everything done as an educator that they're expected to do for the paltry sum that we pay our teachers today. 
but we're not training our children in the real world of men. We're not training them in the laws of America. I don't see that in the educational curriculum. God doesn't see that either. What we do for a few weeks of time is not enough to last in a child for a lifetime, to recognize where his or her boundaries begin and end. A person's human boundaries are not to be transgressed by anyone other than God. Jesus Christ, accordingly to many scriptures, makes everyone. And because of that, we are not saved. Because of that, we are God-made. Which means that God knows what he makes in every human being. But God does not make the killers of men. God does not make the killers of the human soul. God does not make women who steal, lie, and cheat. They do that themselves. God, however, does show us the signs of what is right for our lifetime. And in the last 10 years, almost every single day, multiple times a day, I get signs, what my metaphysical is called in her proprietary practice of God signs, actually signs of the house of God. And that house of God speaks one name to me every single day, almost multiple times a day to the point that I had to bow down to the Lord above. He has put one name before me, the woman that I am to love. And he's put it so loudly, so clearly that he says, hey, look over there, little man. And there it is, right before me. So when a man walked into that situation and took away what God had planned for this man's life, I can tell you that God is raging with COVID. How many of you submit every part of your entire motherfucking day to the Lord you say you believe in? How many of you submit every decision you make to Jesus with regard to when you get up, when you go to sleep, when you shower, when you clean, when you eat, when you speak, when you listen, when you hear, when you do everything, every part of every year? As a man of a pagan house, of a man of a pagan lord, I can tell you, I do this in everything I do, even to the point that I curse at God because I don't want to do what he wants me to do. But you know what? God is smarter than me and smarter than you, and every time I do, I win. Every time I do, I earn. But here's what I know about the world. We are a world of selfishness, we are a world of sin, and most people won't give up their illness of trying to be Lord over other people to do their life correctly with God's house. 